This video is how to do a Monte Carlo simulation in Quantum Excel using the design sheet feature. For this example, we're going to use two resistors in parallel. The schematic is at the top, and you can see that the equation for impedance is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Let's say that we know that R1 is normally distributed with a mean of 300 and a standard deviation of 2, and that R2 is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 2 as well. We would then like to know what the distribution is of the impedance. To use the design sheet feature, we click on QXL Monte Carlo, create modify design sheet, and then create design sheet. When I click on create design sheet, Quantum Excel will ask how many inputs we have. In this case, the inputs are R1 and R2, so I type in the number 2. And Quantum Excel asks how many outputs we have, and because we have only impedance, then the answer is 1. I then click on next. At this point, I can enter the name of each of the input factors. The first one is R1, and it is normally distributed with a mean of 300 and a standard deviation of 2. And then R2 is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 2. I then click Next. And Quantum Excel asks me the name of the output. In this case, the output is impedance, which I'll abbreviate with Z. When I'm done, I click Finish. Quantum Excel then makes an IPO definition sheet where on the left hand side you can see there are process inputs and on the right hand side are the process outputs. Because there are multiple distributions and the parameters are different, you'll notice that the process inputs label them as first parameter and second parameter. So for the normal distribution, the first parameter is the mean and for the normal distribution, the second parameter is the standard deviation. The output is on the right hand side. You can see that the name is already filled out, but there is no equation. So what we need to do is teach Quantum Excel the equation for the impedance. Once again, that impedance is Z is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. In this cell I6, which is where it says enter equation here, I need to enter that equation, but I need to use cell references. So this cell, F6, is what I use instead of R1. This cell, F7, is what I use for R2. So if I was going to the enter the equation in Excel notation, I would click equals, and then left parentheses, I need to type R1. So R1 is referenced by cell F6, so I click on F6, times, and then click on F7, close the parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, F6 plus F7. And now I've taught Quantum Excel what the equation is for impedance. It's very important to note that the only reason the F column exists is to define the equation. The initial value in the F column is not part of a random seed. It has no influence on the Monte Carlo simulation whatsoever. It only exists in order to define the equation. Then if I have spec limits, I type them in. In this case, the lower spec limit is 70 and the upper spec limit is 80. If you don't have spec limits, you can still do the Monte Carlo simulation, but you cannot get defect data or estimates for CPK, CPM, or defects per million. Now that I've set up the Monte Carlo simulation completely, I am now ready to run the simulation. So I click on QXL Monte Carlo, run, and I choose the number of simulations. Computers are fast, so I'll go ahead and do a million simulations. And when I do, Quantum Excel will create the expected value analysis or the Monte Carlo simulation results. I'm going to explain these results in another video. That is how you perform a Monte Carlo simulation in Quantum Excel using the design sheet. In another video, I'll show you how to do the exact same problem, but without a design sheet. You can see that in the series of Monte Carlo simulation, and a link to that series is in the description below.